Today I want to talk about exercise, mitochondria, and cancer. Hello, it's August 15, 2018, and I am Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor in Tempe, Arizona. And I would like to tell you about how exercise can play a decisive role in preventing cancer. In my previous videos in this series, we paid a lot of attention to this very detailed chart here, for which we give a lot of credit to biochemists and Sigma Aldrich for providing. For the advancement of biochemistry, and medical science. And if you remember, we focused a lot of attention here on this yellow shape, the mitochondrion. That's mitochondrion, singular, and mitochondria, plural. This, you remember, is the power plant of the cell. It is where we make ATP, which is our currency of energy. This is what allows us to move, to think, to stay alive and thrive, doing everything we are capable of doing. You may remember that normal metabolism takes this path down through the mitochondria. This is the normal, healthy pathway that our cells take all the time. I also talked about the alternative to our cells' use of the mitochondria. That is the alternative pathway, here, where pyruvate is converted to lactic acid. This path, which skips the mitochondria, is the path taken by cancer. Cancer metabolism goes off this way to your right. Even in someone with late-stage cancer, most of their tissue and cells go through the normal pathway, not the cancer pathway. So we want to have the mitochondria well-functioning. And to make sure we have plenty of this metabolism, we want to have many, many mitochondria at work to be able to have excellent, boundless energy. I bet you can guess the most certain way, or I should say the most likely way, to increase mitochondria in your body. If you guess exercise, you're right. This article from the Journal of Physiology in 2008 was the first to find an increase in mitochondria shortly after exercise. In it, Dr. Sarah Wilkinson and colleagues found an increase in mitochondrial protein synthesis from exercise. Now this 2017 article from the journal Cell Metabolism shows that especially high intensity training increased the number and overall bodily capacity for oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria, this normal pathway. Incredibly, the benefits were more pronounced in older than in younger people. The high-intensity interval training was especially helpful for overcoming age-related decline in mitochondria numbers. If you're not familiar with that term, high-intensity interval training, it means a series of short spurts of activity at high intensity. Think of sprinting, push-ups, lunges, bicycling hills, or varying the speed on a treadmill. As we age, the capacity of our mitochondria to generate energy typically goes down. However, in this study, both the number and overall activity of those who exercised increased dramatically over those who were sedentary. Exercise works across the entire body to help protect it from disease. A 2016 study of over a million people showed regular exercise cuts risk for 13 different types of cancer, including breast, ovarian, and colon cancer. Therefore, the reason that exercise is beneficial against cancer is primarily this, that plenty of mitochondria, and perhaps more importantly, mitochondrial capacity, open up this pathway down here, opening it up for normal metabolism, thereby draining away from this other pathway, the one that cancer uses, draining that down to a trickle. However, I think there is yet another mechanism that makes exercise preventive against cancer. In this Scientific American article, we see how when we exert so strenuously that we have a relative lack of oxygen, the metabolism in the muscles are forced over into the same pathway that is used by cancer. But should we worry? No. Because right after we come to rest, all that lactic acid buildup then goes into reverse and returns to pyruvate. And now, we have built up our mitochondria so much by exercising, that pyruvate can now go into the mitochondria, assuming we have at least the minimum nutrients necessary, as I discussed in my previous videos. And then we can go down here through the normal metabolic pathway. But there is yet another reason that exercise is great. There is a principle in chemistry that if you want to stop a chemical reaction, just add the end product. Exercise just now gave us an excess of lactic acid over here. That's our end product, which is also the end product of the cancer pathway. So that doesn't really encourage or allow cancer to take the same path. In other words, cancer is inhibited. You may be thinking that cancer rarely arises in skeletal muscle or the heart. That is true. 
But the increased mitochondria throughout the body that we have gained from exercise is possibly the main discouraging factor against cancer metabolism. Sports physician Jordan Metzl, MD, says exercise works for just about everyone who takes it, young or old, and if done correctly, it has few or no negative side effects. Every dose is 100% effective, even the small ones. It's the most powerful, readily available drug in the world, and it's free. Dr. Metzl has written the book, The Exercise Cure, among others. How much exercise should you do? Well, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends 150 minutes of exercise per week. Let's say that could be 30 minutes each weekday. More is better, but this is an established beneficial level. If you choose high intensity interval training, you could cut the amount of time. But because this really is the best medicine on the planet, you really should not shortchange it. By the way, in addition to being the best medicine, exercise is my primary health insurance. That's right, the whole debate about the cost of health care? Any insurance that I purchase is not nearly so protective to my health as exercise, sleep, and correct nutrition. Hopefully, in the not too distant future, physicians and health insurers can team up to encourage preventive health in patients and to prioritize and incentivize such essential components of lifestyle as exercise and good nutrition. You may be interested in looking into health shares because health shares does exactly that. I am Dr. Colleen Huber. It is August 15, 2018, and thanks for watching.